Hey everyone, welcome back to the Anderson Bros Outdoors. I'm Jake, and today we have something exciting planned for all of you out there. We did it. We got the Red Cat Ascent Fusion. Hey everyone, welcome back. As I said, my name is Jake, and today we're going to unbox and review the Red Cat Ascent Fusion. Without further ado, I'm going to welcome my brother Mike to the show. So today we're going to be unboxing and running the Red Cat Ascent Fusion. Not only are we going to be doing that, but we're also going to take the Vanquish VRD stance out and doing a video on the comparison between the two, but that's going to be in another video, so stay tuned. So what do you know about RC trucks? Very low. Very, <laughs> Very low. What, what you've taught me. The first thing we're going to do is talk about the differences between the original Red Cat Ascent and the Red Cat Ascent Fusion. There are quite a few of them. We probably won't nail all of them because there's still some potential unknowns. The biggest thing is that, as you can see by the picture, it is a black truck. I think it's the only color that you can get it in is black. It is a cab only style truck. It has a carbon fiber chassis on it. It is a flat rail chassis, much like the regular Ascent. And then there's some, some other differences that we'll dive into once we unbox it. This is the box that it comes in, which is relatively small because this is the size of the truck. So you can see like this is a, uh, you know, we've got a lot. We've got a lot of stuff jammed into this one box. This is the regular or the original Red Cat Ascent, by the way. Set that aside and we will open this box up. So we got a knife. Let's go ahead and open it. Safety first, always cut away from yourself. Don't cut yourself. It's a good idea. Yeah, it is. Looking at the picture in the front, some other details on the truck. It does come with a Hobby Wing Fusion SE from the factory and the carbon fiber chassis, as I stated. And then you actually also get portal weights, which is interesting. Really cool. Hobby Wing, a good brand? Yeah, yeah, they're a pretty good brand. All righty. You can see in the box, everything is just kind of thrown in there. We have a booklet with some stickers. You want to open that and start checking that out? Everybody likes stickers. Everybody likes stickers. A remote that's in a package that I, I assume should be like this, but it's not, and that's fine. The remote's still in there, so it's all good. And then we have the truck, which is the prize possession of the box. Very nice. Box. Yeah, it does actually look really nice. I like the red accents. Oh, yeah. The aluminum. Yeah, nice. The truck itself is zip tied to the cardboard, and then the axle is zip tied to the chassis, which is also interesting. Grab some scissors here, and we're going to remove the zip ties to take it out. Cardboard. Well, we do have more stuff in there, so we'll get that out. The back axle is also zip tied to the chassis, which is kind of strange, but we're not asking questions around here. We're we know why they would do that. Maybe just easier on it. Uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe keep it com compressed. It's not bad, huh? Uh, something. That's what it looks like. It's yeah, it was keeping it compressed, but I don't know why. Maybe oh, I don't know. I, I have no idea. I've never seen that in a crawler before, where the axle was zip tied to the chassis. First for everything. There, <laughs> it is a first for everything. So immediately, some things that we notice are the red accents, like Mike has already stated. Uh, we do have a nice sticker across the hood that says Fusion. Uh, the Fusion is because of the Fusion motor. It is a Fusion SE. And then we have some other details. Back. Yeah, yeah, we have the Jeep sticker. No problem. No problem. Problem. Some other really cool things is the bumpers, the metal bumpers. I do like these. They are nice and, and they are hefty. With the plastic stuff and really the thinner sheet metal bumpers you can bend and break those relatively easy when binding so the thicker bumpers are actually pretty good for all of the spacers those look like they're nice billet spacers so that's a plus pretty solid huh? yeah i'll let you do the honors you want you want to do everybody's favorite thing and take off the plastic oh sure voila also have some nice accents on the side of the body the red Ascent sticker, and then the red Fusion. What are we thinking about the tires here, Jacob? These are the same tires that came with the original Ascent, and I really want to like these tires, but when they get dirty, they don't, they don't work very well. Speaking of tires, one of the things that is different on the Ascent Fusion versus the regular Ascent is the regular Ascent came with glued 
tires on the rims. And these are actually true bead locks. So you can take these tires off and put your own tires on these wheels and utilize the wheels, unlike previously where you couldn't actually do that. So that's a huge win. Absolutely. Make it more unique as yeah. you want and desire. Uh, yeah, for less money. Because now all you need to do is change the tires instead of changing the wheels and the tires. Other than that, it looks like a, a lot of the stuff is the same. It's It's got different billet diff covers. The diff cover in the front is supposed to be narrow or shaved, so that way you get a better turning angle. The front steering bar doesn't hit the diff cover. Right. What are we thinking about the links? Because we both know on a, another car, I messed up them links on that. Are you talking about the stance? The yeah, Vanquish on the stance? stance? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Tore, tore them up. So, so the, the Vanquish stance comes with the, I think they're uh, one and a half millimeter links. They're really, they're really thin yeah. and they bend really easy. Yes, they did. These are thicker. These look like they're the same as the original Ascent here. You want to hold that. Yeah. There is a difference in the front. The front is now angled out. So you can mm -hmm. see it does angle out because of the, it looks like the fusion motor maybe and the drive shaft, so it doesn't hit. Whereas here, you can see that that front link does does actually come in contact with the drive shaft. So that is an improvement. That is an improvement. But if you'll look here, the lower links in the back, those are actually Vanquish Phoenix links because we broke one of the links. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so we did break one of the links yeah. from the factory. Yeah. I don't know. You know if these are any better uh, they do look different i don't know if they're just anodized or whatever just a different color uh, i guess we'll see we'll see if they stand the test of time i know that's right otherwise it is uh, still a chassis mounted servo in the front much like the regular ascent and uh the primary differences are going to be the bed so missing this is bad huh yeah yeah we're missing the bed which i i have mixed feelings about i i kind of like this look in some instances, but for the most part, I'm not a huge fan. I would have rather had the bed and then the ability to remove the bed. I know a lot of people do. I didn't, as you can see. But one of the things that I will be doing for this truck is I'm going to be designing a 3D printed bed for it. That'll be cool. It will also work with the stock bumper. How are you feeling about the foams? Uh, I don't know that there's any foam in there. At all. Huh? There, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing huh? Just air. The cab is held on by two clips yes the cab is held on by two body clips thanks mike yep. and let's go ahead and pull those out they are angled so that is a plus because if they weren't angled they would be a, a very big pain it's kind of a pain to do it not angled but it's not as bad so it does have the same clip or retainer on the front of it and the body does come off if you really wanted to, you could, could probably trim the bed of the regular ascent body and put it on there. What's going to hold you up are the frame pieces, I guess. So if you cut this part of the bed or if you remove those, those it would be it would probably work just fine, honestly. So, gosh, these things look solid. Yeah, they, they do. They do. They do look solid. Now we have the body off. We have the original. I believe it's a hex hex fly servo i was really impressed with it it is an hx ts i believe the shocks are the same they're just anodized a different color so they have the black bodies instead of silver bodies and then the red caps instead of the silver caps one of the other interesting features is the front actually comes with the springs pre-installed on them so you have very little articulation in the front and then they removed the inter internal springs from the rear so you have a lot more articulation there the reason for that, um, well, I was very curious, is because when you're doing a climb like this, mm -hmm. you want the chassis to stay as close to the axle as possible. You want it to be loaded. That's okay. what's called loaded. Okay. And so when you're doing the climb, if the front wheels lose traction for any reason, then they're just going to hang there, and you're going to go from loaded to unloaded. And, and when you unload, out. it you have the higher possibility of shifting weight moving your center of gravity and it will fall back on itself i do that all the time yeah it happens <laughs> it does look like everything else is pretty much the same it has the same drive lines so or the same axles with different covers and then the front does have portal weights which is nice i don't know how much they weigh the other major change obviously is the fusion motor so this is a hobby wing se fusion it doesn't look like the se fusion but it is it's an 1800 kv motor Looks pretty beefy. It is. It is pretty beefy. 
Oh, yeah. One thing to note on this motor as well is that uh, the traditional Hobby Wing comes with, I believe, nine different parameters that you can program with Hobby Wing program card. And the parameters are on here. So you can see, like, we have one, two, three, four, five. Number one is running mode. You, how do you want to run it? Your battery type, your cutoff right. voltage, things of that nature. Okay. There's actually 15 different parameters on that you can set here. So you plug this into the ESC right here. Mm -hmm. You turn it on and you can program it. Now, typically you have a lot of options between 9 and 15 options. With this motor, they have made it less options. So you can only program four different things. And it is in the manual. I don't know exactly which four things those are. Right there. Boom. Cut off voltage, motor rotation, drag brake force, and drag brake rate. So there it is, folks. There it is. I don't know off the top of the head what the voltage for the Beck is set at, but we're going to test that right now. So we just <laughs> used the voltimeter to measure the voltage output of the Beck on the Fusion SE here because you can't adjust it. It's not part of the four adjustable settings. And surprisingly, it's already on 2S, so it's already on 7.4 volts, which is probably why the servo does so well out of the box because more voltage is more powerful. Typically, some servos are made to be lower volt and some are made to run at higher volt. That was one of the things that we did notice with the regular ascent is how well the servo performed right out of the box. And it eliminated the need for us to put a better servo in it and spend the money for that because it worked really well. So how much did this cost? So this truck costs $399.99. So it's a $400 truck ready to run. <laughs> One of the other things that comes by default in the Ascent Fusion is the 20% overdrive. So you do have an accessories kit here that come with the truck and there are different transfer case gears in it for zero and I think 5% and you can put the zero or 5% in there. But from the factory, it comes with the 20% overdrive. What are we thinking about drag on it? Do you remember how that that stance was rolling down on me. The drag brake on the Fusion SE should be fine. The okay. Fusion SE is a good motor. That's good. Typically, most of the trucks that I have either run the Fusion SE or the Fusion Pro. Here lately, I've been running a lot of outrigger motors, which are the small drone style motors. Not only do they weigh a lot less than the Fusion SE, they also can be cheaper. One thing I am noticing doesn't have those little lips in there to help the battery stay in. They really in that thing velcro strap quite a bit you talk it. about on the stance itself on this yeah 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 what are these called again these are sliders sliders that's yeah, it yeah sliders. yeah so i did i did see a lot of people on social media complaining about the sliders and the fact that they are a lot longer than the body or a little longer than the body i can understand the complaints but at the same time personal preference right there's an old saying cheap fast reliable pick two that's all you're gonna get so you can get cheap and reliable or you get cheap and fast. <laughs> You're not going to get all three ever, right? You take out the cheap out of the equation and now you have fast and reliable. Same concept, right? There's also another saying that goes like this. You can't please everyone. <laughs> That's very true. You can't please everyone. The truck is, is fantastic out of the box on paper. Theoretically, this truck should be one of the best trucks out there. There's really only two other trucks out there that compete with this truck out of the box for a variety of reasons. You have the regular Ascent, which competes with it because it's basically the same truck with all the upgrades on it. And then you have the Vanquish stance. The reason that there is only the two other trucks to compete with it is because of the chassis itself. Typically, trucks come out with a C-channel chassis instead of a flat rail chassis by design to be more scale. You're, you're trying to emulate an actual truck. Right. These are more dedicated to extreme crawling, competitions, things of that nature. In order to be a class one, you do have to have a zero degree skid, so it has to be flat. This does have a flat skid, so this could, in theory, be a class one truck if you meet all of the class one criteria. I know that the stance cannot be a class one truck out of the box with a hard body because it has to be a chassis mounted servo. So this is a chassis mounted servo instead of an axle mounted servo, mm. and so this could be a class two or class one. The other thing about the stance is it has a five degree skid. So it can't be class one because it has to be zero or flat skid. But we're not gonna talk about the stance. This video is about the Ascent Fusion. One of the other things that you need to keep in mind is for the price point, you don't get any batteries. There's no battery to run the truck and then there's no batteries for the remote or radio. We've got the battery strapped in and we've got about a mile of the battery strap left. You know, it's not something that I would typically complain about. For a competition truck, I mean, obviously they're using what they have in stock already. I recommend getting a shorter 
strap. And we've rambled really enough about it at this point. So let's take it out. Let's run it. And let's see how it does. That better than I had anticipated. Let's see what these tires are capable of doing out of the box. Looks like they're pretty sticky. dirt on the old tires. So far, pretty impressive. Alright, now let's get the tires a little wet and see how they do. Run over a nice yucky sock. Alright, so the tires are nice and wet. This has typically been a pretty steep incline. Looking good. Yeah. Let's see how we can get up here. About went swimming there, didn't we? Got our first little. Uh oh, I'm about. I'm about to go swimming. Got our first little nick on the old body. Let's see if we can do this transition here. No, we cannot. I don't. Nope.
would be impressive. Maybe. Servos fading. That was the line. Thank <laughs> you. 
Ja. Right, welcome back so it's been a few weeks we've been trying to get the video out life's happened Mike's not here unfortunately we're gonna proceed without him huge shout out to Mike for joining us for the first part of the video big thanks there so you've seen the footage on the truck of it running there's just a couple of things that I want to touch on with the truck before we close this video out the first thing is overall it's a relatively decent truck I don't have any major issues with it. Before anybody asks, yes, I did lock tight the front and the rear diff and the U-joints. I don't know what else I could do to make it better outside of just swapping out the axles. The tires performed relatively well. I do think they're a different compound than the regular scent. The original tires stopped working after they got dirty. All in all, right out of the box, you don't really need to add anything to it to go and crawl and have fun. A couple of things though that I did notice and I didn't really like so much is I did crawl in an area with some water spots. We did go through a little bit of water. The receiver stopped working after that crawl. So I ran the truck all day, I ran it through the water spots. I never submerged the receiver. I never actually got past the skid in the water. The next day when I went to power up the truck and drive it, the receiver was no longer functional. So I replaced the stock one with a Spectrum radio and receiver that I had laying around, a spare, and it works just fine. Just know that if you do plan on mudding or getting in the water, you're gonna need to waterproof the receiver or it's just going to simply not work. And I think they're between $40 and $50, so they're not cheap. The other thing to keep in mind is the U-joints. So the front axle shafts have U-joints in them. The U-joints do fall out. It doesn't matter if you lock tight them or not. Just be cognizant of that. The links, I've seen a lot of instances where people are breaking the links. I was trying not to bind the truck up enough to do that. So either you're going to need to buy better links or you're going to need to be very cognizant of where you're crawling to make sure you're not binding it up. The Fusion SC motor is really good about not really telling you when it's bound up. It just keeps going and then stuff breaks. I did break the links on the regular Fusion Ascent as well and from what I can tell people are breaking them on the Fusion too. So be on the lookout for that and then the carbon chassis is fantastic. It is a three-piece chassis. It has the flat rails for the chassis itself, and then it has the shock hoops for the rear and the front. I didn't really like it at first, but I do like the design, so that way if you do want to make a Class 1 rig out of it, you can certainly do that without having to hack up the chassis or buy a new one. Pretty cool there. Uh, one of the downsides of the chassis, though, is it's not full carbon fiber. There's composite in there as well, and I've seen people break them. They were already breaking the chassis, so be careful. Other than that, I can't really complain about the truck. The truck has been relatively good to me. It's obviously got some limitations with the flat skid and the stock tires. It's been a, it's been a performer. Can't complain. It has mostly kept up with my other trucks. It is really nice to be able to take the truck out and not have to carry it back to the truck. I haven't had to do that with this yet. There is nothing that's perfect. The stance is a prime example of that. There are issues with that truck as well. You've seen footage. The next video that we're going to do is we did nine gates with the stock Fusion and the stock Vanquish Ascent. So that video will be coming up later this week. Feel free to check it out. We appreciate you making it this far. Feel free to give the video a like if you liked it. Huge shout out to the people coming up in the next scene. We hope you have a great day.